come next spring when all the world is new and fresh and green and And I'll carry in my heart just one friend that I'll find you still waiting for my arms. We'll meet, we'll kiss. will blossom as before This story takes place in Arkansas. It's a proud state, and its inhabitants claim they could fence it off from the rest of the world and live forever on their own resources. It all began on a hot summer day in 1927. Hi there. You lose something? I lost my aunt. Your aunt? Yes. Oh, I don't mean an aunt like... Well, like my Aunt Myrtle. You know. Mm. I mean an aunt like... Like who? Like A&T. Aunt. Oh, an aunt. <laughs> Was he valuable? Well, you couldn't sell him or anything if that's what you mean. But he was a black aunt. Black ant, huh? Some kids told me that black ants are tree ants. Mm -hmm. And they live in trees like great ants live in tunnels. I wonder where green ants live. I wonder if there are any green ants. Did you ever see a green ant, mister? Mm-hmm, one time. One time when I was real hungover. Oh, here he is. Oh, he's Hiding in the dirt. Good. Yeah, there he is. Well, I guess I have to go now. Uh, you, you, you going down that way? Sure. Uh, just a minute, I'll get my things. Walk down the road with you, all right? Sure. Well, this is where I live. What? This is my place. Who, who's your father? Gotten. And that's a funny thing, because all the other kids I know got one. I never had one. Sometimes I wonder how I was born at all. Your... your name is Ballard, ain't it? That's my last name. How'd you know? Uh, I'll walk you down to your house. All right. Get ready for milking. Hello, Bess. Why are you here, Matt? 
Bess, I, I've been a lot of places these last few years. I've been all the way to New York City and I've been all the way out to California. I found out that whiskey tastes about the same no matter where you are. And the uh, last three years, I, I've been wondering what my wife and daughter was doing. I, I didn't know about him. He never answered my letters. So one day I said to myself, I said, Matt, why don't you go and find out what your wife and daughter are doing? So I guess I talked myself into it. Bez, didn't you ever get my letters? Matt, nine years ago when you walked out on me, I said to myself I never want to see you again. As far as I can see, there's no reason to change my mind now. Like I told you, I wanted to get a look at you. Well, now I have. I'll... I'll look you up again in about eight years or so. Matt! I reckon I was a little hard on you. I still think you're done wrong in coming back. But the damage is done now. Being as you're here, I reckon it's only fair for you to see Annie. So you can stay to supper. If you stay sober. Bess, I ain't touched a drop in over three years. And, well, I would like to stay. I ain't had a chance to even find out how Annie is. Oh, she's all right. Is she... Did she ever get over... No. Nope. Still mute. Can't utter a sound. Outside of that, she's healthy enough. Strong as a horse. Where is she? Oh, out in the woods somewhere. Spends more time there than she does at home. Shy, huh? Naturally. Worries me some. Around the animals so much, she's beginning to act like one. Bess, do, does she have a great big old white dog? Dog? Part horse, if you ask me. I, I, I seen her, Bess. She's a beauty. Prettiest thing ever seen. I'm gonna do the milking now, Mama. All right, son. Don't let Susie nurse that new calf more than a couple of minutes now. All right, I won't. Uh, how, how about me uh, helping you with the chores? Uh, uh, Abraham. Abraham? After his great-grandfather, Abe Fulbright, on Mama's side. Grandpa was named after Lincoln. Abraham, this is your father. You, you mean like a papa? Like a papa. Golly. Glad to meet you. Gee, I didn't even know I had a papa. You know something, Abraham? I bet you I'm just as surprised about this thing as you are. Well, let's, let's get on to the milking. My mom isn't very happy about the new calf. She ain't? Why not? Because it's a heat. Oh. Where's your milk stool? Oh, there it is. Get over, Susie. Get over. Get over, Susie. Ah. Hey, she's on the back stool. Get off, Susie. Suppose she hurt her? Oh, well, we better go see. Come on, Kitty. Come on, Kitty. Come on, Kitty. Come on. Come on, Kitty. Annie's home. Oh, let's, get, let's look at it now. Is she hurt? No, she don't hurt. I thought she's much hurt. Let's see that tail. Yeah, it's all right. Didn't get hurt. Uh-oh, look, look, look at this. Look at that big old nasty tick there. See? You go still, Kitty. I'll get it out. Uh, I'm gonna hurt Hold still. Mm. Hey, look at that nasty old thing. That a big one. <laughs> Hi there. Annie, this is our papa. Honest, he is, Annie. I think he's the one that born us. She's just a little bashful on account she can't talk. How'd you manage so well, Bess? Woman alone with two kids? Hmm? Wasn't as hard as you might think. I sold the timber off the new land to the railroad. That finished paying for the place. It's a family named Stories living in the old house. They share crop with me. They're lazy like sharecroppers usually are, but we manage. It ain't a fancy living, but... You've done a good job all the way around, Beth. 
I'm sorry I come back. What's done's done. Children, supper's ready. Not much, but I wasn't expecting anybody. Not much. Where I sit, it looks like a table set for a Thanksgiving reunion. Oh. Well, where's your dog, Annie? It's not allowed in the house. Oh, come on, sit down. He ain't gonna bite you. She always acts that way with strangers. You know, if you'd put a saddle on that hound, I bet you could ride him right across the meadow. <laughs> Uh, what's his name? Oh, it's a she, and the name's Runt. Runt? We named her when she was a puppy. <laughs> Supper ready? Well, look at there, all. What did you get that there store-bought tie, huh? Leroy Hightower gave it to me. Lord, we thank thee for the blessings we're about to receive. We thank thee for our health and for the health of our loved ones. Somebody pull this table away from me. <laughs> Trouble is, I just didn't have enough room. You should put away a lot. Abraham. <laughs> and I did, Abraham, and I did. It's in black-eyed peas. I ain't tasted black-eyed peas in two or three years. Uh, well, I, uh, I hate to eat and run, but uh, I got quite a long walk ahead of me. I'd run you over to Cushion, but the Ford's got two flat tires. Yeah, I, I noticed that when I took him in. Aren't you going to stay all night? Well, not this time, Abraham. I reckon it'd be all right if you did stay tonight. It's a long walk and you can bunk in Abraham's room. Sure, I got two beds in my room. Two? What you got two for? Abraham's got a problem. Oh, I see. Well, I wouldn't want to put you out, Bess. I said it'd be all right. All right with you? All right, Abraham, take my luggage into our compartment. Annie, time you trotted up to bed, you had a big day. Good night, dear. I, I declare you could plant a garden in them ears. I want you to scrub them out good now, do you hear? All right, good night. Good night, Annie. D does she sleep up there? She wanted a room of her own, so we fixed up the attic for her. Oh. Abraham has what used to be the spare room. And uh, you're in our... Good, good night, Bess. Good night, Matt. Good night. I got a sure cure for it. Sleep with your eyes open.
your gun, Leroy. What was it? That ballot girl visiting the cold again, I guess. She's gonna get herself killed one these days. She ain't careful. Running around at night like this. Maybe better crank up the car and run over and tell Bess. Ah, oh, she'll find her way home. She knows these woods better than we do. We'll tell Bess in the morning. Just won't give up on Bess, will you, Leroy? What do you mean, won't give up? Maybe I'm being encouraged. What makes you think Bess wants me to give up? All right, we'll tell her in the morning. She had room for some more of them black-eyed peas. You sure put away a lot. Funny, but I never liked them before. Abraham, if you finished your breakfast, you better hang out your bed. Not today, Mom. Don't have to. Well, that's the best kidney tonic we've had around here. Look, I want you to go over to stories before it gets too late. Tell Jeff I've got a lot of things that need tending to around the barn. Well, I, uh, I guess I better get moving before all that work starts. I'll, uh, I'll just say goodbye to Annie and then... Be on my way. I'll call her. Annie! Annie! She's out here, Mama. Oh. Bye, Matt. Well, bye. Bye. Papa, can I walk a piece with you? Well, I'd be mighty proud to have you, son. Very gentlemanly of us to leave the ladies without no means of transportation. Get the jack out of the car there. Get this tar fixed. What's the matter? Aren't you going out with Runt today? Something bothering you? You liked him, didn't you? So did I, once. I'll sure be glad when that thing wears out so I can have the rubber for the slingshot. You know, I don't think you're gonna have very long to wait. You know something? I sure could use a dipper of cold water. I'll get you some. Got time, young man. Gotta get some water for my father. Your father. Why don't you stay with us all the time? I'll run, get your water, son. If I got the old buggy in running order, you might uh, trot me into cushion. Oh, and Bess, uh, I was noticing yesterday, your pasture fence is kind of run down. Might hold for now, but uh, come next spring with young stock and all, it won't hold much. You ought to get it fixed up before next winter. Want the job? Can't pay more than a dollar a day in Keith. You can share Abraham's room. Why are you doing this, Bess? Oh, lots of reasons. Mostly the children. They sort of take to you. I forgot how important a man is to children. Between us, of course, you're just a big... A hired hand. 
Yeah. All right, Bess. You hired yourself a hand. Mama, a car just turned in the gate. Well, Matt Ballard, I declare. Oh, Mr. Canary. When did you get back? Just last night. Hello, Matt. Oh, hello, Leroy. Gonna be around for a while? Yeah, I figured I'd stay around a little spell. Yes, I'm plumb out of chicken wire. Fordham store's out, too. What did you save me a trip to Long's camp? Oh, I think we got a spare roll, Mr. Canary. Hello there, Pistol. I swan, you go another inch. Let's see if I can find a couple of pennies here. Now, don't you spoil him, Leroy. I reckon it's all right this time, son. <laughs> Matt, there's some wire leaning up against the chicken coop down there. Will you show Mr. Canary where it is and let him pick what he wants? Sure, Beth. Thanks, Beth. You need me, Matt? No, thank you, Leroy. I, I don't need you. Bess, why'd you let him come back? That's my business, Leroy. You gonna let him stay? Looks like it. You think you ought to? Well, Shorty Wilkins will be glad to know he's back. Shorty says the bootleg business has been bad lately. I don't have to listen to that kind of talk, Leroy. I'm afraid you're gonna have to get used to that kind of talk. If he stays around here, from everybody. Thanks, Bess. I'll pay you back soon as Fordham restocks. No, well, there's no hurry about it. Come on, Leroy. Oh, by the way, Bess, had a visitor again last night. Again? You know, that Colt's Park thoroughbred, naturally, I want to protect my investment. Any disturbance, the first thing I think of is Bobcat. I'm sorry, Mr. Canary. Well, I swan. I just can't get over the way this little pistol is sprouting up. What you gonna be when you grow up? I don't know. A cowboy or an engineer, maybe. You think you're tough enough to be a cowboy? I don't know. I should hope so, though. If you're anything like your old man, you are. Used to lick me nearly every night after school. Of course, uh, <clears throat> we both grown up a little since then. What kind of a mate you think we'd make now, Matt? Well, I don't know, Leroy. I ain't thought much about it lately. Seems I recollect George Campbell used to beat you up regular. And I beat the tar out of George last year. And George is a big boy, too. You remember Bess. That's the night I drove you home from the box supper at the church. We better get a move on, Leroy. Thanks, Bess. Come visit us some night, you and Miss Canary. We'll do that. So long, Matt. Bye, Mr. Canary. Take her easy now. bring you home? He brought me home that night. Annie! Oh, Annie! You sneaked out again last night, Annie. Oh, don't be too hard on her, Bess. You know what you get for this. Now, Bess, all kids like to sneak out once in a while. We might as well straighten out one thing right now, Matt. I won't tolerate a spoiled child. Even the Bible speaks against it. And I'm raising my children by the rules. Mommy ain't gonna clobber, are you? Mind your own business, Abraham. You sneak out again like that young lady, and I will. Oh, I almost forgot. It's milk day. You might as well meet our sharecroppers, and since you're fixing the Ford, drive the milk over to Chandler's siding. I'll be ready in a minute. Oh, Bess, uh, I guess you can handle a Ford all right, can't you, when I get it fixed up? Well, I have up to now. Why? Well, I'd, I'd kind of like to cut through the field on foot and sort of get reacquainted with the place. All right, go ahead. I'll meet you there. Mama, can me and Annie go along with him to show him the way? Sure, son. Go ahead. Come on, Abraham. Let's finish fixing that tar. Can, can I ask something? Sure, son. Go ahead. Can, can Leroy Hightower lick you? Can Leroy Hightower lick me? No, I don't think old Leroy can walk me. 
Then why do you let him talk to you the way he does? Don't get me wrong, son. I ain't no coward. I fight if there's a good reason to fight. But old Leroy spouting off at the mouth ain't no reason for me to do something I don't want to do. Wait a minute. Time as any for you to learn some respect for them babies. You and Annie get up in the tree. Hurry up. You take coon or fox or almost any animal. They'd just soon stay away from people. Even a bobcat will run if he's got a chance. Not razorbacks. A pack of them babies get together and you kids would end up with a good sized dinner. Matt Ballard. Nice Howdy. to know you. <laughs> Never thought about Miss Ballard having a husband. Reckon I should have, though. We were having two kids and all. My wife's dead. She's been gone quite a spell now. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Well, when a man gets wrong about my age, he don't have much use for a wife, you know. Oh, I want you to meet my son, Robert, here. Care for a swig of home brew, Ballard? Oh, uh, not today. Thank you. Bob, this here's Mr. Ballard. Hello there. Hello. Too many crickets. Them's bear trap, ain't they? Yep. Yeah, we brought them with us from Dakota. You know, I hear that one of these things can snap a man's leg like a twig. Well, you heard right. Takes a lot of trap to hold a bar. Hmm. I hate to throw any cold water on your plan, son, but uh, where do you expect you're going to find any bear around here? Well, bears like honey. And I seen a lot of wild bees over on that fenced off hill. What fenced off hill do you mean? He must be talking about Echo Mountain. Echo Mountain? You best stay off that hill, son. They got it fenced off for good reason. Why have they got their land cut off, Ballard? Well, back when I was a little shaver about like uh, Abraham there, a two-bit mining outfit came in here and found a bunch of ore over that old hill. I don't know what it was, uh, copper, gold, I don't know what. And that still don't tell me when they got it fenced off. Well, when they got through digging, they didn't fill the holes in. Didn't cover them over or nothing. Just left them that way. Now, you just stay away from that hill, son. Dead blame chickens. Put me out of my mind. Chickens is one thing I can't see why the good Lord ever created. They ain't big enough so you can see them, so you don't know whether they're pretty or not. They don't help the crops now. Now you give me just one reason why the good Lord ever created chickens. You know, there's always a chance that milk train might be on time for once. This milk day? Yep. The kids and I are going to walk back through the new 40. Thought maybe you'd like to drive to Chandler's siding with Matt. That's a good idea. Uh, uh, best. Uh, be kind of careful going back. On the way over here, we ran into a bunch of Razorbacks. Papa chased them. Hey, Bob, you walk Miss Ballot and the kids back home. I'll get the eggs. They ain't but four and a half dozen. Them dad blasted hens is getting lazier every day. <laughs> Any. Hey, ain't that Tom Totter? Yeah. Hi there, Totter. Hello, Ballard. Hi, Mr. Smith. How you been? Oh, I've been fair. Say, Ballard, can I get that other can for you? What, what? Oh, no, no, no. Hey, stories. 
Did you hear the one about the two black crows in Kansas City? Oh, did you? <laughs> no. I think I ain't the most popular man in Arkansas. I can't say that you are. Think this is gonna be a permanent thing? I don't know. Maybe you could do something about it. It's up to you, and it'll take time. Uh, look at it like you was one of them, Matt. Put yourself in their place. What would you have been thinking the night Abraham was born? You feel the same as they do, Mr. Canary? I've always felt that you was a lot more of a man than they gave you credit for. If you're still around here. Come next spring, you'll prove I'm right. Well, I'll swan. It ain't our old friend, Matt Ballard. Seen Shorty Wilkins yet? I ain't been looking for him, Leroy. <laughs> Come on, Leroy. If you've never worked from sunup till sundown on a farm, it may sound like a terrible way to live. But then you wouldn't know how grand it is to sit down to eat when everything tastes good. And to go to bed at 8 o'clock so tired it seems oh, like midnight. Oh. And to wake up at sunrise feeling so healthy that everything in the world is beautiful to see. There, now. When you take it, I'll put it on a hanger, and I'll sew it later. You youngsters, get to bed. Ah, oh, gee, Mama. Oh, now, you heard me. You want to go to town tomorrow, so you have to get a good night's sleep tonight. Go along, now. What are you looking at? You've been staring at me all evening. Oh, uh, nothing. I was just thinking, uh, thinking to come next spring, we keep working like this, the uh, place ought to be in pretty good shape. How come people are always saying, come next spring, something's gonna happen? No, it's just a saying, meaning in the springtime or not too far away. Seems to me it means it ain't never gonna get done. Oh. Good night, Abraham. You coming? Hmm? Oh, oh, yeah, I'll be along in just a minute, Abraham. How come you sleep with me? All the other kids' papas sleep with their mamas. <laughs> Good night, Abraham. Night. You know, Bess, uh, Abraham might have something there. Good night, Matt. Good night. Did you ever think about it? Good night, Matthew. Well, think about it. Good night, Bess.
Uh, you pick up the hardware we need. Oh, and for goodness sake, undo your collar. You'll oh. smother. Abraham, you run over to Aunt Bessie's and tell her we'll come by, but we can't stay to supper. And don't you let her stuff you know. Oh, hello, Jeff. Hello, Miss Bennett. You coming with me? All right, then you can look around by yourself. You got your dime? Well, don't spend it all on candy. Why don't you and the children pick me up at Aunt Bessie's in about an hour, huh? All right, we will. Should you stick a pool? Boy, you lucky. That ain't luck, Billy. That's pure science. Your science just ran out. Oh, oh Mr. Story. <laughs> Who's your friend? Oh, this is Matt Ballett. Uh, Matt, this is Nick. Pleased to meet you. Oh, you, Nick. you want to play a game? Yeah. This is the only table I have called. OK? OK. Please, keep your feet on the floor. Don't be breaking the cushions. <laughs> OK? OK. <laughs> Matt, should see you break. Gibbs. Tell me something, Leroy. What? What are you planning for the future? You're a big boy now. You should be thinking about the future. You gonna stay a hired hand all your life? Nope. I got it all figured out. I'm gonna find me a pretty little girl who already has a farm of her own, and I'm gonna marry her. You mean, uh, you're gonna get married and settle down? Settle down? Who said anything about settling down? <laughs> no siree. I'm just gonna marry and then take off and see the country. I'm gonna drink all the liquor in 48 states. And in about nine years, I figure by then I will have had my fill of fun. I'm coming back to my little girl. You mean, uh, marrying first is like taking out insurance for your old age? That's right. Of course, it's gonna be kind of rough on the rest of you fellas. How's that? It's just when you get warmed up to fooling around my woman, I'm gonna come back home and ruin everything for you. Leroy. I made up my mind I'm gonna stay out of trouble in this town. And when I make up my mind to something, I can I can be pretty darn stubborn. You've been you've been trying to get my goat ever since I got back. Then I only got one thing to say to you, Leroy. Hope you have more luck finding the little girl you're looking for. On top of everything else I've ever said about Ballot, I never calculated I'd have to call him a coward, too. Having a big day, Annie? I was saying to Bob last night, I says, Gee, you feel like you're in need of a swig, that little sort off fellow over there is a man to see. Oh, Shorty. Oh, you know him? Sure, Shorty Wilkins has been the local bootlegger as far back as I can remember. Hey, Matthew! Hiya, boy. Hi, Shorty. Hi, Shorty. Hi, Jeff. How you been doing, boy? Fine, fine. You? Oh, tolerable. Say, I sure am glad to see you. Well, I bet you ain't gonna be glad to see me when I give you the bad news. I don't drink no more. Oh, that's a shame. And you were one of my best customers, too. What happened? Well, one morning I woke up and I found out I just lost my taste for it. Yeah, me too. Just hate the stuff. 
Never touch it myself. Oh, by doing, I ain't lost my taste for it. Come on, Matt, cover up first. I'll take a pint of your panther juice. Don't forget there's a nickel back on the bottle. Cat get your tongue? <laughs> yeah, that's what it is. The dad burned cat got his tongue when she was little. Look at me, I'm her old man. Glug, 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 glug. Hey, you guys leave my sister alone. Who said so? Oh, I don't hit him. He's a sissy and a tattletale besides. Tattletale, tattletale, hanging on. Try that on me. Yes, Abraham, what are you doing fighting in the street? Uh, those kids are making fun of Annie. They're always picking on us. Honey, don't you let them get your goat. Kids like that are... Well, they always got to have somebody to pick on. They just ain't got no better sense. Come on, honey. Mom is waiting for us. Come on, Abraham. Abraham, get the bucket out of the back there. Mighty thoughtful of old man Haley to have his water trough right up here at the top of the hill like this. Oh, excuse me, Annie. Annie, you children stay out of your father's way. It's getting so he can't even walk with you underfoot all the time. I don't mind, Bess. Oh, Annie, I almost forgot. I got you something. Gee, it's a French heart. I noticed that sometimes when your mama calls you, you don't act like you hear her. She can't tell. So if you hear her, you blow on that once. Why, Matt, that's a right good idea. Will Annie ever be able to talk, Mom? You ask too many questions, son. Is it a secret why she can't talk? I told you, it's an act of God. Now, I don't want you to ask about it again. But he will ask again, Bess. And he'll keep right on asking. And Annie would ask, too, if she, if she could. So I think it's only fair that we give him an answer now. No, Matt, not yet. Annie, would you like to know why you can't talk like other folks? Matt, please. And then come on, honey. Listen to me. I'm warning you, it ain't a very pretty story. And I'm gambling quite a bit telling you. In the first place, it wasn't no act of God like you've always been told. God gives you a voice just like everybody else. When you was a year old, I thought it was the most powerful voice I'd ever heard. And before you was two years old, you, you could talk a little. Because I couldn't understand much of what you said, but to your mama, it was greater than the Gettysburg address. But your, your papa wasn't much good. He got a real good deal when he married your mama. He got a pretty girl and a real nice little farm thrown in the boot. But he wasn't grown up enough to appreciate it, so he let the farm run down and he made the pretty girl stop loving him. He didn't care. He didn't have sense enough to care, just so long as he had another jar of whiskey around someplace. Then, then one night, he came by the church to pick up you and your mama. 
He'd, he'd been over with them fun-loving boys at Long's camp. And the mama thought he was a little too drunk to drive, and she wanted to take the wheel, but he insisted. He always got his way. Maybe because he was bigger and stronger than her. Or maybe because she loved him too much. Anyway, I run the car off the road over Red Oaks, wrecked it. Your mom and me walked away from the wreck unhurt, but you never uttered a sound since. So if you want to start hating me, you better do it right now before you, before you get to liking me too much. I may as well look you right in the eye when I say this. What you done to me and the kids was a bad thing, Matt. A real bad thing. But I reckon you done some paying for it before you come home. And I'll allow since you've been here, you acted right manly. But I've been lonely a terrible long time, Matt. And you only been good a couple of months. How do I know you won't get restless again? Yeah, I guess you don't know, Bess. I know I won't, but I guess there's no way for you to know it. I hope you won't. But I can't help being scared at times. Maybe I'll get over being scared. I think I have a little. But let's wait a spell. For my sake, let's be sure everything's right. Good night, Bess. observation that red liquor and Christianity can't live in the same hide at the same time. But there's always that man who claims he can control it. I can take a drink, he says, or I can let it alone. Amen. Ha! Brothers, remember the scripture. Wine is a mocker, strong drink a brawler. And he that erreth therein is not wise. And brothers and sisters, I'll tell you something further. A lion cub is a good pet, just like a kitten, so long as he's a cub. But when he grows up, he'll destroy you. And brothers and sisters, it's the same with alcohol. You can control it at first, but someday, It'll destroy you. Mama, I don't drink. And that's the reason Solomon admonishes, look not on the wine when it is red, when it sparkleth in the glass, when it goeth down smoothly. For at the last, it biteth like a serpent, 
and stingeth like an adder. Amen. And now, we are saying hymn number 83. God moves in a mysterious way. Hymn number 83. wrong here? Brother Meaner, when the air gets still and sticky like it is now, and the sky looks like it does, that usually means a cyclone. Well, it seems to me it was just last prayer meeting night that I asked you men to help dig a storm cellar for the church, but you were all too busy. Come next spring, you say. Brother Meaner, I allow you got a point there, but this ain't no time for bickering. All right, service is dismissed, but I want all of you back here tonight. Don't forget, Don't get panicky before somebody gets hurt. You take care of your family ballot. We'll take care of ours. Now, I know how you feel about me. This ain't no time to voice our personal grievances. Now, you listen to me before somebody gets killed. We're going to get out of here a lot faster if we just, just, just calm down. Start acting like grown-ups. Now, Jim. Get somebody to help you get that wagon out of here. Help him, Bob. The rest of you, get on back in your cars and get the engine started. Delbert, go on inside and open up them windows if you want to save your church. Mr. Canary, you follow Smith now, right after this car gets clear. Go ahead, back it up. You coming with us, Jeff? I Jeff, Smith, Smith get moving. Cellar so full of water, it looks like a cistern in April.
it's out there right now. It's a mile high and a mile across the top. Maybe a few feet at the bottom. A regular old snorter, huh? the barn door. Well, I've heard tell of them things blowing a broom straw through solid rock. I believe it now. Dead burn fence lifted. Blow the hair right off in the man's chest. You all right, honey? Annie, why do you do things like that? Come here. Sounds like it's gone. Yeah. They don't stay long, but they sure raise Cain while they're here. Let's take a look. How do you know it ain't out there just waiting for you to open that door? We got a little work cut out for us. Yes, sir. We sure have. Yep, there's lots of work to do. That looks like Mr. Totter. I wonder what he wants. I'd better go freshen up a little. Hello, Ballard. Hello, Totter. Mr. Canary, what, what, what is all this? Didn't Totter tell you? No, he didn't say nothing. That's well, something we decided at a church meeting last night. Means you're the only one in the neighborhood that suffered any serious damage. We figured we'd lend you a hand. Of course, we can't bring your cow back. But we can pitch in a little lumber and some sweat, and we ought to have that barn back in business in no time at all. Well, this is real nice of you folks. I know that Bess and the kids will appreciate it. Well, dang it, it's, it's hard for a fellow like me to say it, Ballard, but we ain't doing this just for Bess and the kids. Thank you, Totter. And all at once, it was Halloween. Halloween was a different kind of holiday in those days. As I recall, most of the kids went in for more exciting sports than just plain old trick or treat. And it was a big night for the grown-ups, too. The Halloween dance at the school has always been one of the year's biggest events. Bess and Matt 
went to the dance for the first time in years. Well, you look like a high school girl. You look pretty nice yourself. Oh, that's, uh, that's my JB. Put every man there in the shade. Will I, Bess? Bess, I love you so much. Good morning, Jeff. Well, wh where'd you get that celluloid collar? You <laughs> say he got himself a girl. No, really? A real uh, female type girl? I reckon. Did you hear that? Who is it, Bob? Lovey Crockett. Lovey, Lovey Crockett. Best you hear that? Bob's courting Lovey Crockett. I heard. She's a nice girl, Bob. Say, talking about getting dressed up. Look at that, Bob. That's a dead burn movie star. Oh, Mama, Mama runs back. Well, just calm down now, Abraham. What's that? Well, Run's been missing a couple of days. Five days. And she's on the back and she's awful thin. Well, let's go have a look at her, huh? Come on. <laughs> she looks like she's starved to death. I better get her something to eat. Oh, no, she ain't starved, Abraham. She just had her puppies, that's all. She certainly has. Yeah, old Runt's gone off some full place and had her puppies. Yeah, I bet them pups is over in that Echo Mountain country. Ain't no dog the size of Runt's gonna get all head up over the puny hounds around here. And there's some big wild dogs over in that fenced-off section, too. Yeah, she better be careful with all them open shafts. And I got me some bear traps set out there, too. Oh, I don't think we gotta worry about Runt. She knows how to take care of herself. Give her some milk, Abraham. We better go. Howdy, folks. How about this dance, Bess? I promised it to Matt, Leroy. Seems a shame to waste a dance on a husband. It's an old habit of ours, Leroy. We always dance the first and last dance together. Thought maybe you've broken the habit. Had them both last year. Excuse me, Bess. I cut out the newspaper. All right, on all right. You go ahead and gossip all you want. I'll go get it for you. It's in my coat. Here, here. What's going on here? Well, if it ain't old past the bottle ballot. Have a snort, Matt. No, thanks, Billy. I'm not doing much drinking on these days. I never seen him take a drink. Come on, Matt. It's Halloween. All right, thank you, Jeff. Oh, come on, Matt. One little snort won't hurt you. It'll do me no good, neither. What he means is. One snort had just sent him off on a month's toot. Matt never was a man who could take just one snort. Well, I know that used to be true, Billy. As a matter of fact, I used to be so waterlogged with alcohol that one drink could just wake up all that was in my system. But uh, not no more. Oh, come on now, Matt. Come on. I, I grew up with you. Tell you what. Now, you always did like this silver buckle, didn't you? Yeah, that's a nice buckle. I'll bet you this buckle against that new Stetson you got up there that you can't take one snort and then not tilt the bottle for the rest of the night. What do you say? Hey, you tempt me, Billy. That's a real nice-looking buckle. Well, then go on, uh, bet me. I need a new hat. Uh, go on, man. I'll bet you can do it. You had a right to say what you did. I've been pretty hard on him myself. I'm real happy for you. He's changed a lot, Myrtle. It's been wonderful. Uh... I swear you get prettier looking every day, Myrtle. <laughs> Don't you, Bess? Oh, she sure does. Well, I think it's a dress. It's real becoming on you. <laughs> well, I declare, Matt, you could charm an Eskimo into buying an icebox. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is this what you want, Bess? Yeah, it's it. Is that Lovey Crockett? That's Lovey Crockett. <laughs> well, I swan. I'll be right back. 
Well, well, looky who's grown up. Looky who's grown up. Now, just a minute. Well, looks like I better be going, honey, before your big fella beats the tour on me. Don't strike me, son. <laughs> Rowdy, someday he's going to run into somebody that's going to put him in his place. I've got a feeling that that time ain't very far off. Matt, you behave yourself. Let's dance. been drinking. Oh, I had one little snort. Oh, Matt. Look, Billy Jackson bent me his new silver belt buckle against my Stetson and... I thought you was off drink. Oh, I am. I just have one drink. One comes before ten. Oh, honey. I'm man enough to take one drink and... Oh, stop it. How many times have I heard that before? When I was a punk kid, yeah, but... Bess, honey, that one drink is all I'm gonna have. All right, then prove it. Prove it right this minute. Let's go home. Oh, Bess, be reasonable. The party's just getting started. Then you won't go. I don't see any reason to go. And I hope you have a wonderful time. You can drink and dance until you drop. I'm going home. But... You lose. Yes, sir, you. You got yourself the prettiest girl in the room. How'd you ever last to a deal like her? Now, don't you start nothing, Leroy Hightower. Start something? Me? I'd be scared to, lovey. Sheila looks like you might beat the hide off me if I got him a little madder. You might at that, Leroy. I used to do it when I was about his age. That was a while ago, Matt. I could whoop you the day I was born, Leroy. I don't think things have changed much since then. Then I think you better step outside and prove it. I'll be happy to oblige. I've been swallowing your insults and bad manners just about long enough. Yes. I can find my own fights, Mr. Ballot. Then go find yourself one, son. This is mine. Hey, Shorty, what is it? It's a fight. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Who is it? Matt Ballot and Leroy Hightower. And this has been brewing for a long time. Leroy Hightower's are squaring off right out there in the parking lot now. Come on! I'm gonna beat the tar out of you, Violet. Stop bragging, Leroy. Put your money where your mouth is. Jeff, let it sit right here. I'm gonna talk some sense into this woman. You haven't now, changed a bit, have you? For a while there, I had hopes for you. But the first chance you get, you're drinking and fighting. No. You ain't being fair, Miss Bellows. Sure, he had a drink, so did every man of the dance. <laughs> I'm higher than a Dakota kite myself. It's a man's privilege to drink on Halloween. Halloween in the Lord's Day is a man-made holiday, and so is liquor. And if I was Bellows' says, 
If I was Bella Sage, I'd have tackled that no-good Leroy Hightower a long time ago. Fact is, Bella's been taken so much from us, I was wondering if Bella was all man. And then tonight, push on that pushing. He's the one to blame Miss Bella, not your husband. Ah, uh, Jeff, you're just wasting your breath. She ain't gonna listen to neither one of us. Might as well get this car out of here. Say, young man. Hey, wait for me! Lost his spurs, so I got plenty more. No, drink it yourself. I never touch it, but I'll make you a good meal. Dollar for every ruckus I had of my old lady, I wouldn't be working for you. You'd be working for me. You gotta understand, Jeff. This ain't no ordinary man and wife squabble. Me and Bess ain't been living together as man and wife. What's that? That's right. As far as her and me is concerned, I'm just a... I'm just a hired hand. Oh. You better come in and dry off your pants. Huh? Might as well. No, sir. It ain't easy to live with a woman. Hey. Here's a light here. Uh. I live with my old lady for... Thirty odd years before she died. I was fifty-five when it happened. Wait a minute. I'm seventy-four now. That's right, I was fifty-five the day she left. How old is Bob? Seventeen. Well, according to your figure, Jeff, he was born two years after she died. That's right. No! You told me that uh, you were 72 one time. 
I lied so much about my age, I didn't get no notion how old I am. Well, uh, you was in the Army. You could look at your Army record. I lied to them, too. Well, Jeff, why don't you just lay... That's right, sleep it off. Lips cut. It's the least of my troubles, Jeff. You win? Well, you was there. Oh, yeah. Uh, tell you the truth, I don't ever remember much about Halloween. Where's Bob? Hmm? Oh, he, uh, came in about two o'clock and I sent him over to the place to water the stock. Must have been a big night. I talk much, Bellas. Well, yeah. sometimes I say fool things when I... after I've had a snort or two. Well, you, uh... you had a little trouble remembering how old you are. I did? Funny things a man says after a snort or two, ain't it? I'm 74 and I got my army papers to prove it. Say, I get your bite of breakfast, you're waiting to change my pants. Uh, thank you, just the same, Jeff, but... I gotta get on over there. Probably for the last time. Oh. Matt. Matt, Annie's missing. What, what? She took off with Runt last night after we left. Abraham went to the party alone. Wow, why didn't you come and get me sooner, Bess? I didn't know it till this morning. Abraham was asleep when I got home, so I just went to bed. Well, come on, let's go see if we can find him. Bob's gathering some of the neighbors to help us. They'll meet us at the house. This off Annie? It's off her jacket. Where'd you get it? Well, I took a run over to Echo Mountains while Miss Bell went to get you, and I found it stuck on a bottom of the fence. I figured she might be over on that mountain. She must have gone up there trying to find Runt's pups. Oh, that kid, that idiot kid. That's a rough country. Some of them holes are over 100 feet deep. You got any rope with you? About 50 feet. Well, come on, let's go. Dog tracks all right, but don't look like runts. Bob! Find anything? Nope, not a darn thing!
Here you just don't know where to look. She might be any place. It's my fault, Matt. It's all my fault. Stop whipping yourself, Bess. No, Matt. I drove her to it. I've always been so careful not to let anybody know I loved them. Even my own children. I, I did that to you too, Matt. Making such a fuss over a man taking a little drink on a holiday. Bess, Bess, Bess. Drink is never going to be a problem to me again. I had no business being so stubborn. Now, Bess, Bess. Look, pull yourself together. No, Bess, Listen to no. me, Bess. Listen to me. Now, honey, I've been thinking that if we find Annie... When we find her, if we could just afford to take her to one of them specialists, I... I got a feeling that she could, she could talk again. And, well, I've been saving my money the last couple of years, Bess, and if I, if I go on back out to the coast and get a real good job and, and save all I can... No, Matt. Don't leave us. We need you. We love you. I love you. Oh, Bess. Took a lot of nerve, Matt. Thanks, Leroy. Matt. Yes, honey. Matt. Who screamed? What? Who screamed? 